Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Lord Emmanuel. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing us to this Christmas Eve day. As we remember that you came into this world 2,000 years ago to accomplish a purpose, and that was to save sinners like us. Thank you for coming and fulfilling that mission and also continuing to come to us today through your holy word and through your very body and blood in the Lord's Supper. Thank you for strengthening our faith, and may this Christmas be a time when we once again focus on you, the true meaning of Christmas, the child who came as God into this world. Amen. You know, names can be very important. My name, David, is the name of the greatest king of Israel, right? Uh, or else I was named after my uncle. It was one or the other. I'm going to go with the king, though. King David, right? Killed Goliath, ruled Israel. It's kind of interesting. Names change over time. Um, in the last 35 years I've been a pastor, I have not baptized one baby named David. Not one. So what happened to that name? I think it's a good one, right? I think in my, uh, my class in high school, which had like 60, 65 people, um, there were three Davids, you know, in my class. You know, when, when it came uh, to my generation of naming children, um, uh, we chose, we tried to do biblical names for our kids. So Stephanie, our oldest daughter, is actually named after Stephan in the New Testament, who was the first Christian martyr, you know, and gave that great testimony of his faith, even as he was being stoned to death um, about his faith in Jesus and seeing Jesus and looking forward to being in heaven. When we came to uh, the next daughter, that's Rebecca, well, she was named after the wife of Isaac in the Old Testament, and then there was John and Josh. We thought we better go Old and New Testament there too, so John, one of the disciples of Jesus, uh, Joshua, of course, fought the battle of Jericho, you know, and we're going to talk about Joshua here in a little bit as far as this sermon goes. My mother had two middle names. Uh, so her, her name that she was born with was Esther Ida Louise Oswald. That was her name. So she had the two middle names because she had two grandmothers, and those two grandmothers' names were in the middle, uh, in her two middle names. I guess even back in 1922, you had to kind of pacify both sides of the family when you're naming your kids, maybe? I don't know. To Matthew, the disciple and author of the book of Matthew, names were important. And you can get that right off the bat, by the way, if you're reading the book of Matthew, because he starts with a list of names. We call it the genealogy of Jesus. And there are two genealogies in the Bible. One's in Matthew chapter 1, one's in Luke chapter 3. They're both very interesting, and that would make a whole different sermon to just uh, uh, have a sermon. Actually, we have had a sermon series on genealogy when Pastor Bill was still here and preaching. Uh, it's really interesting to study those those names. Here's how Matthew starts his gospel account. He says, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of God, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. And then he goes on from there. There's actually three lists of 14 names each in that genealogy that Matthew records. But I think what's interesting is the way he starts out this gospel, according to St. Matthew, is he says, the book of the genealogy. <laughs> and actually, the word for genealogy there is simply the word we use for book, <laughs> for list. It's actually the word for Genesis, the beginning. So the book of the beginnings of, Je of Jesus Christ, the beginnings, his family tree. So Matthew records that whole list. I'm not going to go through all of those names. But then later on in the same chapter, we have an angel visiting Joseph and instructing him on the names to give this child. Here's what it says in the gospel reading uh, Pastor Jared just read here. Verse 21, she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. 
Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Did you catch the two names that were in this section? To be given to Jesus, right? Jesus and Emmanuel. We want to take a look at both of those this morning. So let's start with Jesus, right? He, you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So Jesus, uh, Joseph was given a very specific direction from this angel. By the way, we don't know the name of this angel. We think maybe it was Gabriel, because Gabriel appeared to Mary and gave the, almost the same instruction in Luke chapter 1, where he told Mary to name her baby Jesus. But, but that angel did not say because he's going to save his people from their sins, but he's going to be a holy one, holy of most high God, son of God. But here we get the instruction that he's supposed to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now, Jesus probably was a bit surprising to Mary and Joseph, and here's why. Jesus really wasn't all that uncommon of a name. It's kind of like my name way back in the early 60s. A lot of people were named David. (laughs) <laughs> well, back in Bible times, a lot of people were named Jesus. Or, and in fact, in the New Testament, there's at least three different Jesuses that are mentioned. Uh, you can check it out sometime. Um, but in the Old Testament, that word Joshua, Joshua, which is the Hebrew way of saying Jesus, <laughs> well, there were a lot of Joshuas. The most uh, famous one, I guess, would be the one who fought the Battle of Jericho. Joshua, the son of Nun, who took over leadership of Israel after Moses died, who led the people of Israel across the Jordan River when it parted like the Red Sea. That was kind of an amazing part of that story. And they went to Jericho and marched around the city seven times, and the walls came tumbling down. And you might remember in that story, it wasn't because Joshua was so strong and mighty. It wasn't because he was a military whiz that they won that battle, but it was the Lord who won the battle, right? The word Joshua, or in English we'd say Jesus, that word Jesus, or in Greek, in the New Testament language, Jesus, that name means the Lord saves. So Joshua in the Old Testament actually lived that out. It wasn't his might, it wasn't his intelligence. It was the Lord who gave the victory. It was Yahweh, God's personal name in the Old Testament. You've heard that spoken before from us from the pulpit here. So Yahweh, the Lord, He saves. So in the word Jesus, that J-E is just a short form of the word Yahweh or Jehovah. And the S-U-S, well, that's the Greek word for saves. The Lord saves. The Lord has come to save His people, but not from some giant or not from some foreign pagan nation like Joshua in the Old Testament. Jesus came to save His people from their sins. In fact, all of those Joshuas in the Old Testament were pointing forward, really. Those names were even like a living prophecy that God would come to save His people from the greatest enemy, from the enemy of death, the enemy of sin, the enemy of hell. And that's what Jesus came to do, right? He came into this world to save us sinners. Yahweh came in flesh to save his people by taking on flesh, by putting on flesh, and then giving that flesh on a cross, dying to pay the price for the sins of the world, including yours and mine, so we could be assured of our forgiveness despite our mistakes, despite our sinfulness. God has come and saved His people. Indeed, the Lord saves, right? The Lord saves. You know, at Christmas time, it's kind of interesting. I, I think um, we get kind of caught up in the stuff, right? When I was a kid growing up, um, my parents always had me fill out a list of my top things I wanted for Christmas to submit to Santa. 
You know, so on my list, when I was probably five, six, seven, eight years old, the top of my list always had one thing, which was I'd really like a mini bike. Now, uh, those of you that maybe aren't my age don't know what that is, but it's like a small motorized, you know, motorcycle. And, of course, I was probably too young for that, for one thing. (laughs) My parents were smart. So uh, it came to Christmas Eve, and we'd open our gifts um, after we went to church, of course, and it usually was socks, underwear, pants, you know, practical stuff. (laughs) I'm like, how come come Santa isn't, like, you know, hitting the top of my list here? You know, sometimes we just get caught up in the stuff of life that really, you know, it's all temporary, right? But when God came into this world, I mean, he had in mind to give us what we really need. What we really need is the forgiveness of our sins, a lasting gift. You know, something that can go beyond this life. Something that actually secures a place for us in heaven. That's what Jesus came to bring. That's what Yahweh in the flesh, God in flesh, came to do. That brings us to our second name, you know. And this, to me, uh, if you read, try to read, sometimes this is what I do, try to read these passages as if you're reading them for the first time. And how do they sound? So I'm going to read this again. Let's try to think about this as the first time. So right after the angel appears to Joseph and says, you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins, Matthew comments and says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. But wait a second. I thought you were supposed to name him Jesus. <laughs> and now Matthew's saying, well, this fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14, which says, and you will call his name Emmanuel. Well, which one is it? Is it Jesus or is it Emmanuel? Of course, you don't have to choose between the two, right? Because Emmanuel is just another way of saying Jesus. Emmanuel, which means, the Hebrew word means, God with us. Well, that's the same thing as Jesus, isn't it? Yahweh saves. Well, Yahweh is God. God is Yahweh. And God came to be with us when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So if we understand Yahweh and we understand Jesus and we understand Emmanuel and we know who God is, and there's only one true God, that's the God of the Bible, that's Yahweh, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, well, then we understand what Matthew's saying here, right? This is all the same thing. This is just a another name. It's like the second middle name of my mother, right? It's the same person. This is that child, that baby, born in Bethlehem to be God and to be a God who sacrifices himself for us. You know, it's really kind of, you can, you can do some mental gymnastics over this a little bit of, well, God came in human flesh. How is that even possible? It's really impossible, but God does the impossible. How could God take on human flesh and then die for the sin of the world? And yet that's what he did. That's impossible, but that's what God did. He does the impossible. And God did it because of his great love for you and me. And by the way, that's impossible too. We don't deserve it. There's no way all of us in this room or in this church as a whole or in this community or in this world deserve what Jesus did for us. Giving his life, sacrificing himself so that you and I could have forgiveness so that you and I could be in heaven. So you and I could join Yahweh, Emmanuel, Jesus, forever in paradise, seeing him face to face, living in his presence, serving him. Well, that's what all those names tell us. So this Christmas, you know, may it be about Jesus. And Emmanuel, the Lord God saves, he is with us. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.